All right, so what, what I'm gonna do now is walk you through a typical finite volume method problem. So uh, how we turn partial differential equations into um, algebraic equations. So all of the problems that we'll see or all the conservation equations that we see in um, convective heat transfer can be written in a sort of standard form. Let me explain what this is. So um, what this is is basically conservation of a scalar property that's measured per unit mass in the standard form anyway. So the idea is that, for example, the rate of change of you know, the density times something. So if I multiply density times something that's measured per unit mass, that gives you something per unit volume. So um, w let's say we're trying to conserve that quantity. Um, typically, when we have convective, um, you know, convection, so either um, via conservation of linear momentum or conservation of energy with convection, there's another term here that looks like the divergence of the density times velocity times whatever that scalar quantity is. And then, so these, these would be the convection terms. And then in our heat transfer, for example, we also have a diffusion term where we have the divergence of a flux. So something, the divergence of something that depends on the gradient of our scalar. So if I think about this as temperature, for example, so some constant times the gradient of temperature is a heat flux, the divergence of heat flux is basically our diffusive term that appears in conservation of energy. And then some problems also have what I would call a source term, where you might, for example, have, um, you know, uh, let's say if this is the energy equation, this could represent, uh, you know, energy, you know, volumetric energy generation, for example, or maybe viscous, um, you know, viscous dissipation. And that might depend on the variable itself. So for example, um, viscous dissipation depends on the velocities, and if the velocities is one of the unknowns you're solving for, that actually goes into like what determines the dissipation. But anyway, so let's consider this um, standard form. And um, so for example, in this equation, if I set phi equal to one, and I set gamma equal to zero, that would represent mass conservation, the mass conservation equation. So that would replicate our um, PDE for mass conservation. Um, if I put in, let's say, uh, UX, and um, if I put in the, let's see, uh, it's gotta be per unit volume. I believe if I put this in as the um, viscosity, that'll replicate, uh, well, of course, you could also add, you actually also have to add a pressure term. So like the source term in conservation of momentum represents forces that are being applied to the system. So for example, if I add a pressure gradient and maybe a, uh, what do you call it, a, uh, a gravitational pool, that would represent, let's say, conservation of energy or sorry, conservation of um, momentum. Well, okay, so I suppose I should, uh, if I wanna do this in the x direction, I suppose I should kill the gradient and do this as a scalar. So I guess in the x direction, there is no gravity typically, and you might just have, let's say, dp dx. So, the idea is that you can construct all these equations by choosing the right value of phi and um, gamma. So like in the, let's see, energy equation, that would be CV times temperature, and then the diffusivity would be defined as, I guess, K over CV, and you could have, you know, like a source term that included say volumetric heat generation. So like we could reconstruct the energy equation that way. Um, so what I'm gonna do is instead of like doing each one of these as if it's a separate thing, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to discretize really for any scalar phi here in the standard form. That's the basic idea.